Hi, I'm Joel Friedlander from thebookdesigner.com and today I want to talk to you about something I call the book marketing continuum. You can see I've written it up here for you. Continuums, that's kind of a funny looking word, isn't it? And I want to show you what this means because I find talking to a lot of authors, you know, there's a big fear about book marketing. And I get that because let's, I'm a writer too, you know, and writers, we're kind of used to spending a lot of time alone. And when people start telling us, hey, you have to market your book, it can sound kind of horrifying. And uh, the first thing I want to say is that you have to understand that marketing is not selling. Okay, so people are worried about selling. And I get this comment a lot from people that say, book marketing, I don't want to have to go out there and sell my book and look it. I want to tell you, there's no reason you should be selling your book. We're not interested in selling books. That's not our job. Our job is book marketing, which is explaining what's in our book, talking about the th reasons we wrote the book, uh, talking about the issues that are dealt with in the book. In other words, we're sharing our passion and interest with other people who have the same passions and interests. Hey, that sounds kind of like fun. That's not, that's not a, a bad thing. That is what I think of as marketing. So get that whole selling thing out of your head. We don't need that. Retailers sell stuff. Selling is when you go into a store and you give them a dollar and they give you a stick of gum or whatever it is and you've made a transaction. That's what selling's about. It's transactions. You know, money for something. We don't do that in book marketing. We let the retailers like Amazon and uh, Barnes and Noble and the big bookstores, they do the selling for us. Our job is creating the content and then marketing it. And marketing is largely about communicating to networks of people stuff that you're excited about. That sounds like fun to me. Somewhere I've got an eraser here. Okay, so now that we solved that problem, what is the marketing continuum? Well, this is what I mean. Let's say that uh, this is time passing. Now, you are an author or a writer. You've been working on your books. Hey, some people work on their books for a long time. I've got a book I'm working on for a client right now. He's been working on for 30 years. So this timeline could go way into the past. It doesn't matter. It's just a matter of the fact that it's taken you a while to create this book and get it to the point it is. So as you work on your book, you are actually starting to market it as you go along. Like, for instance, you might be in a writing group and you're talking to your, about your book to other writers and they're giving you advice or giving you feedback or critiques or whatever it is. And in effect, that is kind of the beginning of your marketing. You're actually talking to people about your book. I mean, that's my basic definition of marketing. The book doesn't even exist yet, but that's okay. Uh, then as you come closer in, you know, once you start to get uh, something that could be called a manuscript, you uh, kind of get into peer review. Peer review is a very powerful process whereby you actually bring people in your field or your category or your genre into the process of your publication. In other words, they kind of become partners in a way by reviewing it. They get to know what your ideas are and they may become uh, champions of those ideas. In fact, it's not unusual in the peer review stage for people to volunteer to write a forward or an introduction or a preface for your book. And that can be a very powerful thing because you've now got their reputation, their networks to add into yours. Okay, so then later down the road, you might start looking for uh, testimonials or what we call blurbs. This is a little bit of a repetition of the peer review process, but you know, you're now going much more aggressively directly to people to ask them for help in promoting your book. Now, all of this is what you might think of as pre-publication marketing. It all kind of sets the stage for your book. Now, eventually you get to that big, big, big day. That's the big day in the life of your book. It's your, the book's birthday, and let's say. Let's call it uh, the publication date. That's like ground zero. And that's the day you go live on Amazon or the day you launch your book. And, you know, my take on book launches is there's no book launch police out there. Nobody's going to come along and hit you with a stick and say, oh, your book launch is only supposed to be a week and yours was two weeks. No, forget it. 
you can make your book launch whatever you want. If you decide it's a week, then it's a week. If you decide it's a month, guess what? It's now a month. So you have some kind of launch window that starts at your publication date and runs however long you want to say, a week, two weeks, a month, it doesn't matter. But on the, um, when you come up to your pub date, you got a lot of marketing stuff that comes into play. For instance, right in here, you're going to have uh, advanced review copies going out, and some of them are going to book reviewers. Uh, you might be setting up a blog tour, and that's going to take place in this period here. Uh, some people call that a virtual book tour because, after all, it's a lot cheaper visiting somebody's blog than it is to fly to Cleveland and go to a bookstore. Uh, you've probably got some promotional stuff going on. That's going to come up as you come into your pub date. And uh, a lot of people use advertising. You know, uh, you can run space ads or pay-per-click or whatever it is. If you've got a website set up to help promote your book and sell it, you're going to try and drive traffic there. So there's a lot of stuff that comes in and starts piling in to your book marketing on the publication debt. Now the reason I'm going through this whole exercise is because a lot of authors think that that's all there is to marketing, is doing this stuff, and that's the end of it. And then they just let it drop. Man, that's crazy. You spend all this time developing this book and the content and the rationale behind it and editing it and getting it set up. Why drop it then? Now, at this time, you also might run into um, what they call uh, Amazon bestseller campaigns. They're usually stacked up so as many people as possible order the book right on the day it's released or the next day to try and drive the book up the Amazon charts. I don't know. It's kind of, it might work for some people. It might be a little gimmicky. I mean, what happens out here? You know, too bad. But think about this. Think about all the marketing you can do post-publication. Like, for instance, once you've got the book out and you start to get known, you could start writing articles based on the material in your book. That's really powerful. You could spread those articles into article directories or use them as guest posts on other people's blogs or submit them to actual paper and ink magazines. You know, you can reach a lot of networks of people that way. Um, you might also start to develop some presentations if that's something you enjoy. Uh, I love giving presentations. I love meeting the people and some people like that, some people don't. But you know the material in your book can be repurposed almost endlessly. How about uh, you might uh, find that you run into people who would like to do a joint venture with you uh, based on the material in your book and they have something that's complimentary. In other words, they're looking to sell to the same people who are the likely readers of your book. Wow, that's called synergy. You can put those two things together. You've got two overlapping networks. It's even more, uh, even more powerful than just one. Now, uh, this whole line of continue, uh, continuing line also represents a lot of opportunities for what we call special sales. And special sales in publishing are any sales that take place outside the bookstore distribution system. And you know, we usually don't think about those too much because we've got a lot going on getting into this pub date and launching the book. But as you go forward into the future, there are a lot of opportunities for you to look at corporate tie-ins or promotional tie-ins or tie-ins to special events, stuff like that. Now, hopefully you've also got a email list and you're going to start growing your email list. And in fact, all of this activity you do around your pub date and the launch of your book you should be driving people to a blog or a website where you can capture their email address. This is a very basic thing. And the reason for that is your email address potentially is going to be responsible for a lot of the money that you're going to be able to make from the publication of the book. And that is money that's not from book sales. But if you think about it, people who like you and hear your voice, they are interested in the next thing you're going to do. So if you use all the energy that you're generating in this book launch, to help grow your list, in the future that's going to be very valuable. And one of the things that really contributes to that is to continue to grow your presence on social media. Social media is the most powerful and uh, the most affordable way to market your book that we have today. It's a great leveling influence and it's just fantastic for authors if you learn to do it in a way that doesn't stress you out. So, I mean, I think you can see that this is kind of a continuum. 
In other words, you've got all this time running up, and then you've got a lot of stuff happening on your launch day, but going forward, it just never ends. And when you understand that, you know, the book that you've published is so much more than just selling a book and making a royalty. It represents a huge influence, uh, a huge investment of your time, energy, and thought. And you should try to maximize that. Now, what's another result that you're going to get from this? All of this activity is going to help you form a community. And this is the secret sauce right here in marketing. Because if you can start to bring these people to your blog, bring them to your website, get them involved in what you're doing, get on your email list, and actually start a dialogue and engagement, your community is going to continue to grow and support what you're doing. And here's the real uh, payoff pitch. Because when you have that community and you're really interacting with them, you can query them about what they think your next step is. What is next? And they can help you. And believe me, the input you get from your community about what you should be doing next is incredibly valuable. How can you replace that? Because once you have that going and you've built this up, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to take that idea and you're going to start again on your next project and start the next system of development. So this becomes the complete continuum of marketing and books and community and engagement and it's very, very satisfying and it can help make you very successful. This is what I'm trying to show you here is that you could take a book and over time turn it into like a real career or an actual thriving business because the community aspect and all this interaction may tell you how to take the ideas in your book and turn them into uh, presentations, webinars, speaking engagements, joint ventures, special sales, and all that stuff. So that's my idea of the book marketing continuum. Book marketing is not something that happens, oh hey, it's pub date next week, we better do some marketing. No, marketing is intrinsically woven into everything you do when you're a real savvy self-publisher. So give that some thought, and I'd love to hear what you think or how you've done some of these same things in your own publishing. Let me know. Leave something in the comments. I'd love to hear it.